Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Mad Mum Luke's. I'm Mahin and I'm here with my co-hosts, Sheikh Amr Saeed and Sim. And on today's show, we welcome Human Keshavarzi, who is the founder and executive director of Khalil Center, a community spiritual and mental wellness center. Human, thanks for coming through. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. So your last name, Keshavarzi. Uh, we're talking a little bit about what's the origins of that? Where, where, where are you from originally? Yeah, so I'm from northwestern uh, Iran, who's where my parents' uh, family descend from, which is uh, actually the uh, Azerbaijan province of Iran, which is uh, about a hundred kilometers away from Turkey. I was actually born in Turkey, but Azeris are a Turkish um, ethnic group, so we're Turkic peoples. So I was born in Turkey, and we speak uh, like Azeri is a Turkish dialect. Do you uh, definitely basically. have that Turkish beard? <laughs> yeah, mashallah. and the clothing. I like it. I like the style. Mashallah, man. Yeah. It's nice. And yeah. how long you were born? So you were born there. When did you come to the United States? Well, actually, I I was raised in Canada. So I was in Canada for uh, since I was six years old, and uh, and I've been here for about eight years now, actually, for in Chicago. So. Okay. Actually, probably nine years or so. So Khalil Center has been around for about seven, I would say. So, um, so you know, about nine years. Sure. And we're in Canada, in Toronto, Montreal. Yeah, from Toronto. Toronto. I, you know, uh, I lived in Toronto for two and a half years, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, I went to school there. Uh, I went to school as in apostrophe. I, I, Where in Toronto? University of Toronto. I was okay. at U of T for a couple of years. Okay, where'd you live? In the city? Yeah, I actually, you know... Uh, my residence was Bloor and St. George Street. Oh, okay. The intersection, okay, okay. so right there. Mashallah. Yeah, pretty close Mashallah. to Bay. I went to the University of Toronto as well for my undergrad, actually. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so what I, year did you graduate? So I was uh, 2003. That's when I was supposed to graduate. <laughs> <laughs> so we were there at the same time. Yeah, but I was actually in the Scarborough campus. And oh, then, okay. And then I uh, did some courses in the in the downtown campus. I've always heard Scarborough well. is kind of ghetto. Is that true? <laughs> Why are you gonna put him on the spot? No, I, I just, I got honest question, man. I'm, joking, I'm from a, I'm from a place they call Scar Town. Actually, oh, yeah? <laughs> well, you know, Toronto. They say the biggest hood is Jane and Finch, right? Yeah. So, That's... so Jane and Finch, and then Scarborough is like the next hood, apparently, and it's. They call it Scar Town, Midland, Midland and Lawrence, basically. Mm, so it's right. interesting. So, it's kind of interesting. The majority of the demographic are like um, children of immigrants. But there's a lot of their working class, kind of like lower lower working class, and there's some uh, some more like, you know, financial hardships and economic challenges and et cetera. That there's like Desi feeling. gangs in Toronto. That's the thing yeah, about yeah, Toronto. Exactly. It's like Sri Lankan yeah. gangs, Bangladeshi oh. gangs in like um, I forget like Victorian the station yeah. off the East Coast. You know, right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah actually, it's like, the only place I've noticed wow. where it's like brown people are more feared than black people. No. Wow, you know? I mean, if I would go, there, I wouldn't. I would have a hard time taking them seriously. Uh, yeah, like, come, on, dude, come on, bro. Knowing that, that I'm that, Indian too, man. Come the on, Indian gangs from Chicago. Yeah. We can we can't ever take them seriously. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember it was funny. I was when I wasted no, across true, the bus, it's the Greyhound, come to Ohio, come home, cross the border. As soon as you see the difference, as soon as you cross the border into Buffalo, it just changes. Oh yeah, yeah. you know, Absolutely. like like for Af- like Af- African Canadians speak very like polished, right, or Caribbean. Right, right. So there's a very large uh, Caribbean population in Canada, especially uh, in, in Toronto, especially Jamaicans. There's lots of Jamaicans. Mm, you know? So yeah, in the area area was weird because you had like mostly Desi Afghani kind of population, and then you had some project housing like across the street, which uh, uh, which was predominantly like African Canadians, and then you had like some Jamaican pockets, you know, where. Where people mm. were at, and then you go a little bit up more, and you had more of a Somalian Arab kind of like hub, all within like walking distance, basically. Yeah, yeah. I heard about <laughs> that. Toronto's yeah. an. Have y'all been to Toronto? I've never. Yeah, been I've to been there. Yeah, it's an awesome. Like it's beautiful. I haven't been, been in a few years. It's been since 2011. Yeah. I know we're talking about maybe going to RIS in a future year at some sure. point. Uh, yeah, set sure, something sure. up, inshallah. inshallah. And yeah, so let me know if you go to Toronto. I'll for sure. Try to connect you with some connections. People, in Scarborough. 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scarf- outside, Scarface. Out, outside, outside of the ghetto, right? Yeah. The ghetto Scarborough. I think my, you, my uncle get you, uh, lives safe, in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, mashallah, man. It seems like uh, Brother Human has seen the wild side too, man. He survived. <laughs> Yeah, but well, I mean, yeah. you know, Ch- Chicago is much different right. than uh, <laughs> a, a ghetto in, Tor- in yeah. Toronto. That is the know thing. Know <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I was just saying, my, my uncle lives in Markham, so I need to, I need to pay him a visit. So, yeah. <laughs> but like, as far as the crime rate goes, you go from Toronto, like you know, it's relative. You realize right, how yeah, relative yeah. it is. That's yeah, true. How actually. many people get shot in Toronto versus Chicago? It's a paradigm shift. Yeah. For oh, real. Of course. Yeah. So, of course. so then you come to Chicago. over here. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Real, real. That's how they call real. it Chirac, yeah. man. Yeah, for exactly. Sure. Uh, moving along, as you, you come to Chicago, um, and then Khalil Center started a couple years after. What what brought you yeah. to Chicago in the first place? Yeah, so I did my graduate studies in Chicago. Um, part of um, my decision to kind of do graduate studies over here was more of a applied clinical uh, psych route versus a lot of the... Um, you know, the sort of like traditional programs in, in, in Toronto were more academically geared. Uh, so this is kind of like, there's two models in psychology. There's sort of like um, academic clinician, and then there's clinician academic. And uh, and I preferred more of the latter. So the clinical academic is more, has a lot more training in sort of clinical work. And so that's what really uh, attract was attractive to me, because in, in Canada, you really didn't have too much, too many of those. And then in addition to that, obviously, um, there's a good Muslim community out here. There's uh, And I was, uh, you know, kind of doing some informal Islamic education with some of my teachers over there as well, kind of, uh, you know, thinking about this bridge between the two. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I wanted to be able to have some, you know, uh, uh, institutions, individuals, mashayikh, ulama over here as well that I, I found would, would probably be... Um, you know, a good a good place to be able to really nurture that, kind of bring that together, alhamdulillah. And, and, and mashallah, I mean, it was great. I came here, I met one of the first people I met, actually probably the first person I met is Moana Bilal. Mm. He's not the president of our board today, actually. Mashallah. It's interesting. And, um, and he was, he came over to Toronto to do a program at the, at the Youth Tarbiya Conference. And uh, I was with my sheikh and we went uh, and, and there was sort of like a seating for some of the speakers and whatnot. So I account- accompanied him there. And uh, and uh, and he's like, hey, we're from Chicago. He was with Adnan Faisal, mm. who was, uh, who's now in India, actually. <laughs> and uh, and he mentioned and and he and he, and um, they're like, yeah, we're from Chicago. I was like, oh, I'm moving to Chicago. That's interesting. And they, he said, OK, when you get there, when you get to Chicago, give me a call. I was like, okay, I'll take you up on that, you know. Of course. <laughs> it's like I'll connect you and all of, of that. I was like, mashallah. So I came and he he uh, took me to the madrasa basically, and we uh, uh, you know um, got to know each other a little bit, and then I got connected to uh, Sheikh Amin. I met Mufti Mufti Azim and Dar Salaam. Got all of mashallah, all of the local s- sort of scholars, and I and I was able to plug right in and sort of like carry on with my. With my studies that I was that I was doing over there, alhamdulillah. And I know from what I understand, we actually recently had Sheikh Amin as one of our guests. Sure. And he has a, a pretty nice role, I think, as far as advising. I think. Oh in yeah, the definitely, center. definitely. In fact, we have sort of an informal affiliation. Um, even when I when we started out in 2010, actually, um, I was doing some uh, classes with him. So for he he gave me like. My, myself and another brother, like six month um, kind of course on looking at the suffering of the MBA and their response to suffering ibtila and and then and 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 he was uh, kind of uh, helping sort of shape some of that narrative and how some relative how relative subhanallah is it yeah. to your to your uh, relevant you yeah know, definitely yeah. definitely subhanallah so, so the the, the training and, just to clarify he was training you with the lives of the NBA. For what you are about to endeavor, exactly the endeavor you are about to go into, yeah. or That's even right. this, exactly. the 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 ibtila of the people, the trials that people go through, the people that you have to deal with, also, right? Yeah, yeah, and in, to in translate that yeah. into how to think about suffering in the Islamic tradition and human suffering, how do we understand that uh, through the Islamic tradition, and and how can we. Uh, you know, learn from the lives of the MBA to be able to respond, uh, you know, to some of those, take them as uh, qudwa, you know, or uswatun hasana in the life of the Prophet like a, 
uh, tremendous examples, you know, for us to be able to draw from. So it, it, it's funny you mentioned that because before this podcast started, I had some cats that fell into oh, yeah. my my uh, just like a window well in in, mm. in our basement, and uh, there were some kittens that fell in there, mm. and. <laughs> Uh, Sheikh Amir here would always say, like, well, why are you hanging on to all these cats? Mm. And I'm like, this is the training of the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he had to watch them and take care of them. Right, he right, up, exactly. I've never, he had such a change in his life. I never thought he was giving them showers and baths. Well, and he was obviously treating them better than his own kids. I, I saw that. <laughs> he has yeah. four kids, so, so. too. You have four kids, yeah. too. <laughs> You're like, that's great, but yeah. there's a series of priorities. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the kids can watch themselves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but but with animals, you have to be tough too. Mm-hmm. There there are times where you know you have to keep the <laughs> the cats, uh, you know, give them bats. You know, oh, they, yeah. they, they don't get want dirty. to. They're right, kittens, right, and, right, of course. And uh, I had to look after them, f- and sometimes you have to do things that you don't really want to do. You sure, know, sure. Put them in in painful positions and stuff like that, where. Uh, uh, How painful are we talking? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When you no, give like, them a bat, them you mean like hold them down? You saw me <laughs> yeah, yeah, when yeah. I was giving that. One of them hey, screamed God, and, and bit my hand. Yeah, you got scratched right all over. I remember that. Oh yeah. my God, it was terrible. Big mess. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> mashallah. So, alhamdulillah, you transit. You know, I've always heard that Chicago and Toronto are very, Islamic communities are very similar. Yeah, very similar, actually. Yeah, it is very similar. Um. I mean, you have probably in Tor- Tor- Toronto is just a very much larger demographic of Muslims, probably mm. like a much bigger. Uh, but in the in the sense that there's a very active Muslim community, you know, there's like a a community. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so that that's kind of similar in that sense. Institutions, there's a lot of some institutions. I mean. That's, the reason why Chicago is referred to as a Chicago Shetty. Yeah, Chicago right? Shetty. You hear about that too? <laughs> yeah. I don't know even. I don't even know who started that. But um, one thing, if we can move along, because there's something sure. that I really want to sure, thank him for. Actually, um, I remember. I think it was in 2012. You had a seminar. Um, you and there was a few other brothers too. It was hosted mm-hmm. by DuPage Attorneys, which oh, is my yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember and that. Uh, the title was awesome. It was kind of something I've always been thinking about, but no one ever had that presentation. Mm, sure. And the title was generally differentiating if it's an Islamic issue right. or if it is a psychological issue. Sure, sure, right? sure, sure. And um, from then on, mm-hmm. you know, thanks to you and the brothers who actually conducted that, mm-hmm. um, it actually um, put a lot of things into context because sure. – Many individuals, whether they've studied abroad mm-hmm. or just being just being raised as Muslims, mm-hmm. they they will say, "No, you have to refer to sacred texts to right. even take care of psychological issues." Some people mm-hmm. will believe that, right? Mm-hmm. And they're not thinking about the branching That's of right. how it's how, how that takes place. So that was my first exposure to yourself. Yeah, right. I yeah, think that was yeah. 2012. Was it 2011? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it probably sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Mashallah. And. I think then you had not established Khalil Center by then, right? So we we did. I think we had it. It was really small scale. Okay. You know, like uh, basically when we started out, it was just me in a, like a basement uh, unit uh, of an office building. So I was uh, still just kind of taking more referrals from individuals and teachers while I'm kind of like working on. Um, I was I was doing a lot of heavy sort of like studying and personal development and that and that sort of gotcha. thing so i was trying to kind of keep a small load yeah. Mm, yeah paving the way kind of yeah exactly very nice and i felt like you know you can't really do something unless you understand what you're doing mm. and so there needs to be a little bit more of a thought process and mentorship and and especially the kind of work that we're doing is really i mean uh, this is sort of visionary. This is a, a, an endeavor that is not very common. There's no one training that prepares you for this. My graduate training didn't prepare me to work with Muslims, didn't prepare me and provide me Islamic ethics or mm. understand how does, um, what role does Islam or understanding of our teachings and our perspectives and our theology and our aqidah yeah. have to do with human behavior and uh, human ontology and epistemology, all these sort of wonderful things. So we don't, we, we don't get any of that in grad school. And then while at the same time, as you mentioned, like differentiating in the traditional like madrasa training or studying, um, you you aren't taught those sort of like 
you know, psychological, biological manifestations. I mean, we study Kitab al-Nikah, Kitab al-Talaq, for example, but we don't really study how to, how to bridge. It's better to have sulh and, and to bring them together and to forgive. And if one is in, you know, uh, a fault, then they shouldn't ask for any reimbursement of or course. compensation. So we know these ethics, yeah. right? But then we don't necessarily know... Um, how to make that bridge, of course. right? And, and one thing, and the one thing I was actually I just thought about is you seem to be, and I remember uh, Brother Fahad also from Khalil mm. when he was Khalil Center when he was with us. Um, you have it seems to be that you have you got your inspiration mm. even when I heard some of your khutbas from Imam Al Balkhi. Right, right, right. Abu, uh, Abu Zayd al Balkhi. Abu Zayd al Balkhi, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and probably more so Ghazali, but okay. like definitely uh, uh, Abu, uh, Abu Zayd al Balkhi is an important figure. It seems to be that he, just for our listeners, yeah. that he was actually an individual that deal with these issues oh, yeah, of, of, of psychology and, and, and behavioral sure. health issues, right? And when I hear when I hear you when I heard that one specific mm-hmm. khutbah, there were some awesome citations that were for contemporary problems. Right, 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 right. So yeah, do you absolutely. do you apply what you learn from Ghazali? Yes, yes, yes. Because I mean, you you do have uh, uh, an institute that is predominantly focusing on healing people through mm-hmm. Islam if That's they're right. Muslim. That's right. And then you know if it, if you need to escalate it to something else you do sure. so right yeah exactly so uh, uh, you know and that's that's important to demarcate like to identify what is Khalil center um and then i can tell you a little bit about the pro- the the sort of like theory or framework or, or approach that we utilize Please, right yes so um the institution is an Islamic institution, not a Muslim mental health clinic. Gotcha. And there's a difference between the there two, is, right? Yes. So a Muslim mental health clinic is mainstream training or a group of physicians or a group of healthcare professionals that say, hey, we want to serve our community. Okay, we want to do something for our community. We want to use our skill set to help them, and that's great. There's a reward great. in that. Yeah, mashallah. A person is bringing their training to help Muslims. But as an Islamic institution, when you when uh, down from our institutional policy to the framework and approach has to be Islamic, mm. right? And so when we so we think about as an institution, what is it that we are doing, right? And um, and so where does this fit, you know? And and so we have to refer to our turath, our, our literature, our, our our scripture, and that sort of thing to be able to derive that. And so one of the things that sort of two two ayahs that we really like sort of lean on, you know, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولُ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ is it, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولَ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ Okay, there's a sort of a process of tazkiyah, reformation of the human being. That was one of the missions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. تهذيب النفس refinement and 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 a purification and reformation of the nafs تهذيب الأخلاق there's so much literature on the akhlaq which is something uh, which you know uh, character development of course which is sort of like an impoverished kind of space today right unfortunately especially in this sort of like society um and so we are looking at the the sort of um, this is being a, a mission. So that's what we're doing. We're sort of bringing, you know, reviving the sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ felt the suffering of others and with rahmah, he wanted to kind of, you know, save people. مَن نَفَسَ عَنْ مُسْلِمٍ مِنْ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرْبَةً الدُّنْيَا نَفَسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرْبِي يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ نَفَسَ It's an interesting نَفَسَ and anxiety, you know? Like to breathe, like restore a person's ability to sort of breathe. SubhanAllah. So wow. a person restores that ability and anxiety is sort of hyperventilation or breathing changes and that sort of thing, especially with panic disorders. And so... Then what happens? You alleviate that suffering. Allah Taala will alleviate your suffering, and you'll so, yeah. so we kind of look at these sorts of things. You know, al khalq kulluhu ma'ayal Allah wa ahab al khalq ilayhi anfa'hum li ayalihi. Right? The the all of the uh, creation are dependents of Allah, and the ones that are uh, most uh, beloved to Allah are those that are most beneficial. 
right? And so beneficial to his uh, to his dependents, to the creation. So as an institution, actually, we came together and we said, this is actually fardul kifaya, a, a communal obligation that we have this suffering, right? And there has to be an Islamic approach or a way of being able to provide a service that's informed, professional, not just, you know, uh, not individuals who think they're doing good, but they're actually causing harm because they don't have the expertise, they don't have the training, they don't have the experience. And so they think they have good intentions, but good intentions doesn't do good work. You're right. You know, in the la a person's like estimation has nothing to do with reality. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And so, so Human, I actually, as you're talking, I'm thinking, it sounds like this Khalil. It sounds like Khalil Center is almost an institute. I don't know if you market yourself this way, but of spiritual purification or tasawuf, because it seems like a lot of that. You know, purific, that kind of purification would lead into correcting a lot of issues. For example, it's all internal, right? Yeah, so you know, the, internal, yeah. Means, the way I understood it was, it was more of integrating the spiritual aspect of Islam with modern therapy and right. my, modern yeah. psychology. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Is, is yeah. that that's pretty what Sim yeah. said? Then is so. Here's the thing, right? So the approach that we use is not. Okay, do we use like Islamic remedies or do we use like mainstream healing? And the two are sort of different. What we do is actually we take, we, we're terming this now Islamically integrated psychotherapy. Beautiful. So what does that mean? Did you guys term that? Yes. That's actually, your... Alhamdulillah. We're Mashallah. sort of like publication and a book project as well. Inshallah. Moana Bilal is a co-editor myself and there's another sister on there. Beautiful. That are planning on co- this uh, a kind of coining like uh, an actual therapy. Amazing. Which is where there's uh, actual publications that we have on a framework that we've sort of put together. So the thing is, it's being able to understand human nature and human behavior from an Islamic perspective. And then behavioral science is just a tool. It's tajraba. Right? It's experiential. That's what empirical evidence is. It's tajriba. We have that in our tradition, right? We had, you know, our history of tajriba, of experience, trial and error. Mashaikh would try something, they'd pass it on to their students. But it would be inspired by the sunnah. It would be informed by the theology, yeah. Islamic theology. So now, similarly, what we want to understand is what is health from an Islamic perspective? What is sickness? from an Islamic perspective. What is ideal behaviors, for example? What is the nature and inclination of the human being? What are the components of the human being? Right? So and um and so we have like the nafs, we have the qalb, for example, we have the we we have the, the aql, we have the ruh. We these are components. So we have to look at from our tradition which is actually very holistic, right? We have jismani health, physical body. We have ijtima'i health, communal health. So we have to f- develop our understanding of human nature. And I'll give you an example. So a lot of Fro- like Freudian psychology, for example, views the human being as inherently bad, as animalistic. Mm-hmm. And then they have like this super ego that basically just reigns it in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. And so what, the, so, but, and their therapy comes out of this theology of human nature. Evil I'm intentionally kind of yeah. using this. And so, you know, the therapy is, you know, you sort of like have to keep it together. But then what we do, we have to do all this repress, like sort of like evil stuff. So we have to find, uh, you know, tame it and confine it and find outlets for them in healthy environments that are not going to result in these sort of like, you know, societal evils. He was growing up in the Victorian era. It's really very important to understand the history of development of a lot of these theories, right? A lot of theories today are like postmodern. So they so the other extreme now, he's in the Victorian era. Okay? And the other extreme is this postmodern humanistic theories. And what do they do? They say the human beings that it is inherently good and that they aspire towards good, but it's a small T. Everybody's got a small T. Good is relative. Meaning my job is to just help you, you know, find yourself. 
whatever that is. It's not confined. There's no recognition mm, of an evil nafs or anything. Like, so what's my goal as a clinician is to provide unconditional positive regard and complete genuineness in my approach. I don't lead you at all. You lead yourself and I'm just there. People have judged you in the past. That's why you're sick. So you understand there's a role for that. I'm not saying there's no role for that, right? But it's piecemeal, you understand? And it comes from this sort of um, ideologies or history of development. I mean, we did this conference, we did this training for the Illinois Psychological Association. And somebody, um, you know, asked, well, are you like offering spirituality? And how do you justify that as a clinician, as a, you know, as a therapist, uh, ethi- uh, ethi- uh, you know, ethically and whatnot? Like, you know, isn't your job as a clinician to approach it from this perspective or mm. to view, uh, you know, dysfunction from, uh, from like a worldly perspective? And I said, well, that's a theory. But part of the stigma of mental health is importation of Eurocentric things that are not consistent with our history, with our theology, with our cultures that we import. And then now we're the enlightened Muslim professional Mm. that, that says what's wrong with all these sick people that they won't go get help for their issues. Mm. So you understand? So a lot of, so I I really don't like that idea that people say, well, there's a stigma of mental health. What's wrong with us? How come we don't seek mental therapy? We don't seek therapy because this, the way that it was packaged and given to us was through colonial means, was through, uh, it was, uh, you know, istamara thaqafi, cultural colonialism. It wasn't even fully developed, in fact. You know, the medical model psychiatric uh, institutions that were in the Muslim world that confined people to psych wards uh, uh, and, uh, and all of these things. Uh, and there was no integrated community health. It was a dismissal of anything spiritual or sacred. So, this is where a lot of stigma comes from. So what we want to do, say, let's wipe that board clean. There is a space for this integration, but it has to be distilled and filtered through our Islamic principles and paradigm. There's a nafs, there's a ruh, there's a nafs, there's a fitrah. Person's good, but they also have this nature to incline towards hedonism. And so... We use behavioral modification principles, both from our Torah as well as behavioral science. There's no problem with that. That's beautiful. To be able to say, you have pornography addiction. That's bad. It's not in the diagnostic code. Torah means tradition? Tradition, exactly. So we, it's not in the it's not in the uh, DSM. It's not in the in the 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 mental health uh, manual of disorders. Uh, But you know what? It's a spiritual problem, right? It's a, a person who has takabur. They're not uh, a person who has pride. They don't have narcissistic personality disorder. So my job as a clinician is done? <laughs> no. That person is... It does Even what if they're an arrogant professor, academic, that actually their takabur serves them in this world, right? Then what we would say, that person is actually healthy, do you understand what I'm right, saying? Yeah. So there's a space, there's a role for clinical pathology, but it's um, devoid or impoverished. It, it's not distilled. It's not holistic. It's not bringing to you the sort of like Islamic uh, holistic outlook. And then, but that's not just to say that oh, now we have it all and we just read Quran and and, and Sunnah and that's it. No, we use that those principles and methodologies. Look at the history of tajriba and historically medicine and what we did, and look at the modern behavioral science integrated. It's more sophisticated than a simplistic approach. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. It's beautiful. So, what is it now, as far as the Khalil Center is concerned? You've explained the whole theory. It's a beautiful right, right, way of right. explaining it. Mashallah, may Allah reward you guys. I apologize for running on. I kind of no, get it really excited. I was when hoping I talk you wouldn't stop. This, you know? I was hoping you wouldn't <laughs> stop. But um, so how? So what? What are the services now that you have based on everything you've mentioned right. in 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 the Khalil Center for your clients? Yeah. So we have a few. Um, uh, you know, four four kind of um, four or three service channels or sectors. Um, is our community uh, wellness, awareness, and education, 
right? So it's kind of a preventative. So what we do is nationwide programming in terms of seminars and speeches and even coordination of khutbas, for example. Um, alhamdulillah, in the Bay Area, for example, uh, when we kicked off, we had like 12 masajid do a khutbah that we sent, we sent, we prepared like a khutbah in-house, mm-hmm. a mental health khutbah, and we gave it to all the imams. Mashallah, across the Bay Area, we had 12 khutbas, you know, and we had like what, thousands of people that listen to like a mental health of khutbah. So awareness and education, right? Through what, again, the languaging that's authentic to our tradition that connects with people. Um, and then so we have that awareness and education and then we have the intervention services, which is our, uh, you know, our therapies, our support, uh, psychological testing, for example. And then we have, um, and then we have research and training. Which is actually a very instrumental part of Khalil Center. Khalil Center is not just again a clinic; it's sort of designed to advance this practice, That's right? Beautiful. And so the research is a lot like the book projects, these frameworks and models that I'm talking about. They're published. We think about them. We talk about them. We have research meetings once a month. Uh, we do data collection, for example, to make sure what we're doing is sound and it actually works. Uh, we're affiliated with um, uh, Stanford uh, Muslim Mental Health. Uh, lab in uh, which actually our director in the Bay Area, Dr. Rania, who is actually coming out to the banquet uh, nice. as a Dr. keynote. Rania is Sheikh Rami's wife. Yes, yes, okay, yes, yes. Is. Yeah, we had yeah, Sheikh Rami. Yeah, So we actually, yeah. yeah, okay. So we actually met in, and he'll be here as well, actually, on the nice. at the banquet. Oh wow! So everybody come out April fifteenth, Chicago. Uh, you know that's the Chicago banquet at Shalimar at six p.m. Uh, you you know uh, I, I really know read- my Mad Bum Luke listeners they love Sheikh Rami, so Mashallah. so yeah. if, if there's an opportunity for you guys out there who want to come and listen to him, or just here talk it is. to him on a personal level. I mean, yeah. his wife is going to be presenting, but yes. he's going to be present also. That's mashallah. right, exactly. He'll yes. be there as well. They're coming as a family. Mashallah, Imam Zaid's a keynote. Beautiful. Um, you know, Mohan Bilal will be there. Mohan Hamza, the whole dot. Wow, you know, you, faculty you from Dato California Qasim. in. <laughs> Dado Qasim will be uh, uh, have 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 a have a booth. This is it's a Chicago Bay Area Connect. You know, wow. and, 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 you know that's beautiful. I think I think right? what you guys are awesome. And uh, obviously, we're going to get back into all the different sectors and stuff you're mentioning. But since we're on this, um, uh, so Dado Qasim is going to have a booth. You said a booth. So not is a this, booth. Sorry, a table. They'll a have table. a table with their faculty there. Okay. So how, how many is it? A two day thing? Is it a one day thing? No, how? it's just one day. Okay. It's an evening banquet. Uh, really, uh, it's an opportunity for people to learn about. Uh, you know where we've come from, where we're going, our expansion projects, uh, what we've achieved. Take a look at our data because you know we we collect data, we measure everything that we do in terms of how many people we served. Is it working or not? Show you charts and you know how many people and where we serve and what's our agenda and goals uh, to uh, you know do more and what are the issues that people are suffering from that we are addressing. So it's an opportunity to come out and really learn about uh, this because. Because, you know, I need, I think uh, part of the reason why Khalil Center has sort of come together and part of my own thinking originally before when I was, I took, took consultation from some of my teachers as well. So look, I can, you know, I really was interested in going full fledged and becoming an Adam. Allah, Allah decided for me what he did. So I, I decided I was, I was like, uh, you know, uh, uh, wanted to go and study. And I said, look, that's not mutually exclusive with doing these other things as well. So I said, look, I can continue these studies, but what kind of service can I do and offer effectively that's in consistent with my skill set and passion and interest and experience and experiences and mentorship that I have around me to say that there's a, to fulfill an unfulfilled need. And we found all the suffering. I mean, people are coming to, uh, you know, first responders, a study by Ali and Mil- Milstein, Marzuk, for example, that was done, uh, you know, where they say um, imams are the first first responders. I mean, Sheikh, you could yeah. attest to that, the first response to uh, mental health issues. And uh, only 10% of imams had any exposure to mental health. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember when Sheikh Hamer would say, that people would come to him for issues, and he would have to refer them. Like, hey, I can't help you with this. You need to go to a right. place at Khalil Center yeah. right, or right. so and so. Yeah, yeah. I would escalate them, and they'd be like, "But the funniest thing is, but brother, you're an alim." I was like, <laughs> first of all, that's you know, we can that can be a little, yeah. But uh, I, we don't study that in 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 
Islamic jurisprudence. We yeah. study Islamic law. Right. Well, brother, you should know this stuff. No, actually, I shouldn't know this. <laughs> and if I did even try to attempt doing that, I can make matters much worse. Right. There's right, some really exactly. cool group of brothers here. Go to them. You know, I escalate a lot of people. I yeah. send a lot of people to Fahad, mashallah, the Hill Center. But they, they, they think that because you have a, 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 um, a, a background in Islamic studies mm-hmm. or the sciences or even right. spirituality, they think that you can cure them right away. That's right. That's right. right? Yeah. That's a, that's you a still dilemma. rookie over the phone or something. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah. Have you ever got, they call it three in the morning too sometimes. And I, I, oh yeah, my kid yeah. ran away from home. <laughs> oh my, my kid oh, ran yeah. off with some girl. Yeah. And, and that's what, and you were talking about the different sectors. Yes, right. The sectors and so we there. do training, actually related to that, the training that we do, part of the thing is a recognition that we're not going to be able to address all mental health right, yeah. right. across the nation. So we say, look, we need to uh, create like a triaging system. So what we had was initially it was just referrals to imams. But then we said, look, imams can do things with yeah. people. It's, they're effective uh, first responders. It's, it's just a matter of a collaborative care to be able to understand what's what's what what's useful to look out for. And so we did this. Uh, so we created the syllabus. Actually, Khalil Center created the syllabus. And, and that is called the Muslim Mental Health First Response Certification. And we launched it in three cities so far this year and over what is it you know uh, 40 imams in the bay area with 20, uh, sorry, 25 participants and uh, community leaders in new jersey new york and then um and then in hartford we have uh, like another 15 so we're almost at 100 already you know yeah, how many do you have in chicago about approximately uh, sh- Chicago. Well, we didn't do Chicago yet. Okay. Actually, for the community, for this is a certification. Actually, oh, it's an eight-hour training. So Chicago is intended to be done after Ramadan, Masha inshallah. Allah. Very nice. So we went out to these communities and we and we gave them an eight-hour training certification because it was actually a counter to the uh, to the uh, generic first um, first aid training, mental health first aid training, which actually was done, experimented with some imams, and they didn't respond very well to it because they said. It really has doesn't equip us with nothing to do with Muslim issues. You know what I'm saying? We don't really understand this from Muslim specific issues or how we respond to this. So we said, hey, look, you know, part of the training is you can be relevant. You can do collaborative care. You can do spiritual care. You can work with mental health professionals as well alongside of them. You can ensure that, they, you know, if they're not a Khalil center, that they're also keeping them in check to make sure that they're providing, you know, services through a through an Islamically acceptable or congruent Mm. methodology. There's actually some studies that show certain mental health conditions can become worse by spiritual. In fact, the more severe... So the hilarious. the more and Abu Zayd al Bakhi actually talks about this, which is amazing, right? Going back to Abu Zayd al Bakhi in the ninth century, he says that you have to differentiate between a clinical disorder. There's two kinds of clinical disorders. Mm-hmm. He says one in which uh, that's uh, more end- endogenous is more biologically driven. Which means that there's sort of like a chemical imbalance predisposition, like a baby is born, they're more reactive, mm. right, than another baby. You know, there's studies to show that they ju- they're just different temperament wise, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so sometimes a person has sort of like a predisposition and we call this like the stress diathesis model. And then you get environmental stress that unlocks that predisposition. And then they have sort of like a full blown kind of psychological distress, depression. He actually talked about depression. He said oh, yeah. depression can be biologically rooted, he says. And the way to treat that is through herbal medications. So he would give, you know, the hikmah of the time, right? Yeah. Would give herbal medications. But he said, you know what? There's another one that's environmentally induced. Somebody who's got a divorce, who lost a, a loved one, went through some trauma, for example. That's environmentally induced. And though it has biological manifestations as well, right? You, you can provide talk therapy or counseling or mm. curative kind of, uh, and, and he talked about cognitive therapies in terms of rethinking or reframing uh, the way that a, a person thinks, you know? I know, like we mentioned, uh, after someone would visit Shekhamer, Shekhamer sends them to uh, a therapist, but a lot of times in our community, we're reluctant to go to a therapist because of all the stigma surrounding it. And I'm and I'll be honest with you, if somebody told me to go to a therapist, yeah. I would probably be very hesitant based sure. on, you know, how people react and, you know, people judge you in our community. Do, do you still see that problem in our community? How, what? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking I would probably wear a niqab and go in your <laughs> your building, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. So. No, so that's a fair question, right? I think, um, so, th- so what has Khalil Center been able to do successfully is that, alhamdulillah, 
we target the, 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 the barriers for service delivery. One of the barriers, the biggest barrier for service delivery is funds. So if a service is over finances policy, we serve everyone, for example. Secondly, is language. We provide providers with, uh, you know, that speak multiple languages. Third is religion. We do some surveys and we find that we provide spiritually integrated psychotherapy. So people respond better to that, for example. Um, other things are judgment, for example. People are afraid. So we want to make our space very accepting. People are reluctant to meet with somebody that they don't know. So what do we do? We do community wellness, uh, 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 education, awareness. So now they see us and people approach us and then we channel them in. That makes it a lot then easier, we have... Yeah. People are res responsive to going to spirituality. Most Muslims, in fact, most Americans interpret their problems through when they're suffering uh, through spiritual lens. Yeah. Actually, even the most like non-religious yeah. people, yeah. when you know, when the plane is going down, everyone's like uh, grabbing for their Jesus peace. You know, yes, of course, of course. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It is, so, that, it is that type of nation. You're right. Right. So, so the thing is that, um, and, and so that's that juncture when people are suffering. So they're going to seek spiritual solutions. So what do we say? Another barrier is that they, they might go to a mental health, uh, so the, an imam, but the imam doesn't know what to do with it. They don't have the resources or time. So what do we do? We leverage and we work with them as well. So, okay, that's another avenue to, mm. Alhamdulillah, this has worked. So like, if you look at our charts, exponential growth through the months, Alhamdulillah. Yes. So now, going back to your issue of like, well, I would be really ashamed to go regardless of all of that. Well, you know what? That doesn't necessarily have to do with the stigma of mental health. That has to do with the stigma of revealing something so personal to somebody yeah. that it, it's a trust issue. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's a human, that's actually a good human response, right? Yeah. You shouldn't, uh, uh, was it in the din uh, uh, right yeah. that, that that this uh, religion uh, is uh, is knowledge you know um the uh, in deen right yeah. so, so this knowledge is your deen so so be careful whom you take your religion be from right careful, yeah. so you are going to trust somebody like, it's not like you're going to trust somebody with your arm, right? Like your arm is, okay, my arm doesn't say anything about my personality, my spirituality, who I am as a person, my thinking, my behaviors, my internal thoughts. So, but you're, when you go to somebody, it's a very personal thing, right? You're expressing and the more information, the better we can help you. Of course. So we're going to try to elicit the most raw kind of experiences and thought processes, things that you never share with anybody. Yeah. Is, that, right? is that what you named it? Yeah, part of it. I, yeah, th exactly. oh, I, I thought it was for the uh, Khalil who wrote the Muqtasar. No, 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 no. What you test me as actually a few things. Yeah. The, 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 na the name itself uh, is, um, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 there's a hadith of the Prophet yeah, right? Allah, right? That uh, uh, that a person is upon the deen of their Khalil. Khalil is a very close, intimate friend. Yeah. Sadiq is friend, but Khalil is a deeper type of friend. That's what Ibrahim yeah. right. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Allah. Exactly. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so the... be careful whom you take as a Khalil. So the, the, you're going to reveal very personal things. You have to develop trust with that individual. So it's a very natural thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but knowing my luck, you're going to be on the khutbah and the member and are going to say you know last week I met this one brother <laughs> and I'll be sitting there in the khutbah he's anonymous I won't reveal his name to you but he's a terrible human being <laughs> yeah. so, so that might say something about how you feel about yourself there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I am I, I do feel I, I'm the least uh, I call it I'm the holy these, man yeah, Let's like, talk about these barriers As to why Let's do this on air man Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's do, do therapy it. Of all of ourselves on air Oh my god yeah. Let's do it I'm, I'm but ready I, I really wanted to get into something Because yeah, we're I'm, at I'm right Actually I, I had a quick, just go, go. quick question So Human Khalil Center's model Is Do you see this practice Already in other faith communities 
in the Jude- like for example in the Jewish community or the Christian community. Yeah, more so in the Christian community than the Jewish uh, community probably. Um the uh, Christian community has uh, Christian counseling centers. In fact, one of the goals we want to get to is to come to the point where we develop a full fledged kind of graduate degree in Islamically integrated psychotherapy once the sort of research re- reaches there inshallah. Um but um the there's programs actually that uh, chaplains take right chaplains yeah. and uh they uh, they can actually get become a licensed mental health professional at the same time it's fit, you know built into their program like through faith based counseling faith based counseling hmm. but also mental health frameworks and oh, models as well wow. yeah so they get licensed by the state as a mental health provider I had no and idea. then they can get on uh, insurance panels as a chaplain mental health provider and uh, and then they also have Christian psychology. You have like a a, a, a a PhD or a PsyD in Christian psychology. You study the Bible uh, in addition to Freudian psychology, for example. No, you know? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they have programs like this out there. And so why? And and actually, if you go on insurance, um, when we're signing up for insurances, they say check off which ones you specialize in. And there's Christian counseling and Christian uh, That's therapy. That's interesting. Wow. Uh, you can tick off. You know, and and actually, there's another trend to spiritually integrated psychotherapy, which we're trying, we're uh, kind of work, uh, applying for the Bridges Consortium right now through the Brigham, uh, what is it, Brigham Young University, mm-hmm. um, that is working on trying to get spiritually integrated psychotherapy as a mainstream accepted treatment modality, and so we're actually working on trying to get uh, partner with them to for us to give the Muslim data or the Muslim piece. The Islamic piece of it, uh, and so I don't, the, the I don't see a game changer. Yeah, absolutely, Mashallah. absolutely. Wow. You know, and, and I don't see a problem from them because they're even from the secular atheist perspective, they're pushing this idea of being a spiritual atheist or yeah. be, being a, a yeah, an yeah, atheist, yeah, uh, a spiritual person. Right. So in that realm, they can't discredit you for being for for um, bringing right, right, right. the spiritual aspect. Yeah, yeah. Into, I mean, but their understanding of spirituality is complete. of yeah. course, of yeah, course. But it the, is. the terminology is yeah. The, the terminology, terminology is all that matters yeah. at least what, in terms of uh, getting credibility in the commu- in yeah. in their institutions and whatnot. Yeah. yeah so it sounds like no one should like. It doesn't sound like you guys would ever have like a non-Muslim client. I think they would. Not necessarily. Yeah? That's not true. So, um, I mean, uh, the predominant we have different, uh, you know, centers with kind of different fields. Um, I mean, different different sites, and um, that's not necessarily true. We do have uh, so uh, so we we do have a niche where we work Islamic contacts work islamic spiritually integrated psychotherapy and then we uh, serve kind of uh, our niche is muslim mental health right understanding muslim mental health how to address it having said that though we're still trained clinicians that can bring our islamic ethics and principles to the profession that we do and that can you know sort of hesitate to use the word dawa you yeah, know of course, of course. as a clinician you yeah. know but but um but uh, in serving service of course. to humankind right of course. uh somebody is in deep distress and you provide service to that individual so people there are people actually interested in just spiritually oriented kind of therapies there's people and then we get doctors referrals as well all right so um in some of our offices actually our Lincolnwood office we probably have more we actually we have like 50% non muslim there versus our other offices or maybe like 90% Muslim and that office is all of these multi-specialty health clinic with all these doctors and they're like we you know we can get down with spiritually integrated stuff holistic you know <laughs> remedies and whatnot this is great you know let's just send them to you when they're stressed out so you have you have a branch in Lincolnwood and you have one in Glen Ellen right in Lincolnwood Glen Ellen and then South Chicago as well South, oh mashallah oh, wow. I don't know yeah, what South Chicago is. Where is, where, where, 79th and Cicero 79th and Cicero very nice yeah and in all of these institutes I mean and then Bay Area as well right so we got the Bay Area yes location, yeah, right? yeah okay what about East Coast is there anything going on on the East Coast make dua we uh, have uh-oh. big uh-oh. big dreams mashallah. visions mashallah. inshallah awesome. so uh, there's some amazing. talk of, 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 of that as well so yeah. it Maybe in the works. You know, I can't give you everything. You got to come out to the banquet, brother. Oh, no, we will. We will. We will. Uh, we will. Actually, where is the banquet? Shalimar. It's at Shalimar. Shalimar North, is at 6 North p.m. North on Saturday the 15th. Wait, wait, Correct. Give the That's town. right. Where, where's Shalimar? Shalimar, is, it, is that considered East. Addison or is that considered Lombard? It's Addison. Yeah. Addison, right? It's on North Avenue across the street from Shahinahari. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, right. If you right. prayed Tarawee behind Imam Faisal last year, 
<laughs> yeah. That's where he's at. <laughs> so, so what exactly? What services or what type of uh, client, or, or I should say, what illnesses do you do therapy for? You know, yeah. because do you, sure, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure you, you, like marital counseling. Do you do marital counseling? Is yeah. that considered an illness? Yeah. So can you kind of go through like sure, a, a sure. list of stuff that you go through just so our listeners yeah, definitely. know exactly what it is and what you don't go through? Yeah. yeah. So we do we we deal with mainly you know mild to moderate uh, mental illness, uh, as well as you know the. Some one of our clinicians called them like the worried well, you know, mm. like the sort of the people who are sort of functioning that yeah. they're not clinically sick, but they they have some issues that they want to go through, right? And we also have consultations. So somebody says, "Hey, I'm struggling with my children." You know what I'm saying? I'm struggling with my cats, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, the, what's cat psychology? You know, <laughs> so I'm struggling with my children. You know, can you give me some like behavioral modification kind of like techniques? How can I do tarbiya? You know, uh, they they won't listen to me. I keep hitting my, uh, I'm banging my head against the wall, like trying to figure out what to do. Can you give me some strategies? You know, that's we can do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, so some people are coming in to process their grief. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then there's more of like clinical depression. Then there's non-clinical depressions as well, mm-hmm. right? Then we're doing uh, marital counseling, for example. A is, lot that, of is that one of your bread and butter, the marital counseling? Is that what you're known for? Well, I mean, I, I would say like we're probably known for that and and the sort of like okay. general uh, mental health yes. uh, as well. I would say that. There's uh, probably a large percent, uh, you know, I don't have the data. You have to consult with... But a majority of your clients, would you see, are there for marriage? Not necessarily. Actually, well... Uh, maybe a majority, uh, probably like 35, but that would still be like a majority because I when see. you break out of like course. depression, anxiety and all of that. Okay. So uh, there's people that come in as individuals and they want to talk about their marriage, for example, that they're struggling with. And then there's marital counseling where po- two people are coming together as well. So there's a lot of marital cases that we actually do. And then we do a lot of anxieties, actually, probably mm-hmm. anxiety is probably next on the list. It's the most common issue anyways like among all the psychological disorders. Do you have any people that... I remember me and some were talking about this. Do you have anybody that's come because of political anxiety, because of the political That's a good, good, good question, actually. Yeah. So uh, I'm sort of tossing around the idea of doing the CNN interview. Like they ask me... Uh, I mean, it's for a newspaper. They're asking the same question, actually. So, really? Um, is that how is the political situation impacting Muslims? Yeah. And the the reality is, yes, there's some that are actually direct, right? Some individuals who family members have been obviously blocked from coming mm-hmm. back or they have travel anxiety themselves. Um, some of my already anxiety clients who are sort of like really anxious about you know, their own identity or have social anxiety have just shot up that anxiety because they're they're already afraid of sort of like being negatively adversely perceived and now this sort of thing. Especially if they're pretty outwardly if the sister wears right, hijab. Right, exactly. Or, yeah, 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 exactly. Wow, subhanAllah. Yeah, and then people are wrestling with the idea of, you know, should I or should I not be overtly, you know, display my Islam? People are asking questions of like, you know, should we hide our identities and stuff like that? Mm-hmm, you know, yeah. obviously. So these are all so coming anxiety from is, a, is a decent amount of individuals, right? Yeah. So exactly. what else? What else do you treat? Anxiety, if, depression, trauma, lots of trauma. You, you know, one in four women have been sexually abused uh, in their lifetime in, in, in the states. One in four. Is it one in four? One in four. Yikes. And one in eight mm, boys, men. One in eight boys. I had no idea yeah. about these numbers, honestly. Yeah, and you know, uh, if you say this, one in four, one in four, and the most common perpetrator is whom you would not guess, and that would be your sibling or a no. close uh, person to you. What, like was it? Can it parent. now? Is amongst that? I need to ask. Is amongst that one out of four that maybe the sibling touched them, but they took it the wrong way, but the sibling didn't mean it that way. Or is it broad well, loss generally perception? not. I mean, it's sort of like... Uh, it's, it's, so, a, it's, so, it's repeated so pattern don't, behavior. Is, people, is it, is don't get, pattern? people don't get like traumatized based upon like an accidental, you know, like That's ambiguous touch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 it, yeah. it might be uncomfortable. It's like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> but uh, and it might be uncomfortable, make, make the relationship weird or something. But but uh, it's very different than trauma. Trauma actually it, You're right, tra- you Im- impairs the brain. It actually rewires your brain. Mm-hmm. You know, right so, uh, so it, it, the suffering is really like, and this is actually one of the things it's so common. 
And what's interesting is like you have spiritual, quote unquote, spiritual manifestations of psychological disorders. So you have dissociative states. People will, for example, have a quote unquote jinn or will, um, as, uh, you know, uh, have sihr or like have these alternative personalities and whatnot that come out. And people are like, oh, this guy's got a jinn, for example, right? Like, what's wrong with Meaning this Meaning that person? he's possessed, yes. Meaning that they're possessed. Sheikh Hamza accuses that about me. <laughs> <laughs> you told me. No, don't joke. And, and, the, and there's reality to this, obviously, right? I mean, we believe in the ghaib, we believe of in course, the jinn. So course. there's reality to this. Of course. But the point is that, uh, but you see, we can identify some of these things. And, and, and traumas oftentimes, mo- a lot of people, when they come in, they come in for a different issue than they do for their trauma. I'm really struggling on my marriage, I'm having serious depression, serious anxieties, uh, serious kinds of other issues. And then you begin to find or see a, you dig deep, a, yeah. a, like kind of abnormal kinds of behaviors that might be coming out. Impulsive diso- control issues, for example, um, you know, all sorts of things that sort of like immature behaviors, uh, emotional stunting or, or blunting or, or blocking and stuff like that. So you see these sorts of things and you're like, you start digging and, and you realize that there's some deep rooted oh, trauma underlying. underneath. And you know? it was very interesting. Body language is very strong. And when you told when you just said it rewires the brain, I want the listeners to imagine as if somebody trying to solve a Rubik's cube, that's how you made your yeah. hands. Yeah. And that's a really scary thing because you're literally taking the mind of the human and trying to bring it. Is there actual, and I don't, I don't know if you're allowed to say this, but is there actually somebody who's gone through that much trauma, especially to a sibling, man, may Allah protect us. Is there actually a way of bringing them back to how they were? Mm-hmm. And the, this Does is, it ever heal yeah. properly? And trauma is like, I would say one of the, bread and butters of like of, of of some of the things that we do i think the thing is trauma is healable right it's not uh, and um and it's su- it's a thing that has such a deep impact on the individual that it basically you know again rewires their brain shuts them down kind of affects a lot of areas of their functioning you know what i'm saying and so you can do interventions but the thing is it's a lot of it is process-based intervention. So there's a science of emotional healing. Okay, so you have to rewire the brain through therapies. So it's an activation of emotions. So you have to relive and counter to what people think. Oh, just forget about it, make dua, or whatever. No, you actually have to go through the, you know. <laughs> I'm not laughing. It's just the, the way you write it off like that. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Go ahead, yeah. So, so you actually have to... Um, and and obviously it's very sensitive. So you have to begin by building lots of trust. Of course, I can imagine. I was going to say that you have to probably be so compassionate. Oh yeah, because there's, there's probably such a hard time for them to be there. They're probably absolutely. sweaty, hands sweaty, clammy, and everything. They have to come and tell this person that they don't know very well absolutely. about all this. So I can imagine that the therapist, like yourself, you have to be very compassionate. Absolutely, you have to love the profession to do this, and you have to love the essence of human beings. The kullu mauludin yuladu ala al fitra. Every person is born on the fitra, and it's their environments. Fa abawa hu yuhawidani o inasirani o yimajisani. It's their environments that, that mess them up, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you have to be able to look beyond the behaviors on the surface to say what's happening with this individual, what's yeah. going on, what led to. There's some people that are just so angry. So the, I, the way I kind of describe them is like they're wound up. You know what I'm saying? Wound up. They're so reactive, you know, to anything. Like, and it causes lots of relationship issues. But the problem is that the other partner is seeing the reactions and responding to the reactions, but not recognizing what's behind the reactions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so the, you have to be able to see that, look, behind this individual, there is a slave of Allah. There's a creation of Allah that was born in the fitrah, that desire, that feels pain, that desires, uh, that doesn't want this pain, but doesn't know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? And so to to be able to be compassionate enough to work with those individuals, I mean, sometimes it's really challenging, you know? I mean, I've had to work with like, I've had to work with like pedophile, for example, before that felt terrible about what he's done. He's like, there's no forgiveness for me. You know, and he just wanted to die. You know what I'm saying? Now, was that a, as a result of trauma he had? A, no, no, that had he, yeah, he actually experienced trauma himself, and that and Same, he was a victim. He was a victim, victim that became an abuser, perpetrator later, oh, wow. right? And he was just, you know, a mess. You know, 
It's like, though, there's no point in doing anything. Like, I, I can't live with myself. You know what I'm saying? And so initially, obviously, it's, it's challenging. It sort of like makes you sort of feel some reaction. But you really have to challenge yourself to say that, like, there's something, there's some goodness behind people. And, and that there's some things that lead them, especially when, you know, there's something, uh, you know, inad, like a person's really stubborn. That's a different story, you know? Like a person just doesn't want help, doesn't care, will victimize everyone else and just doesn't have any sort of uh, response or remorse or they have no interest in, uh, in, 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 you know, healing or anything like that. Yeah. But then there's like the, 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 the the vast majority of people yeah. that may present that way, but if you kind of dig underneath yeah, a little yeah. bit... Everyone budges. They everyone, budge. Everyone budges. They don't want to feel that. Pain. No, they don't. They don't because people they know don't that it's People don't want to play. live in, in pain. It is affecting you know? them, and they know that there's something wrong with it. Yeah. So I know that you guys don't write scripts for medication itself, right? You don't... Right. Really... We Well, um, actually, in our Bay Area office, uh, Dr. Rania is uh, there, okay. so she's a psychiatrist. MashaAllah. Okay. Um, so um, there's some medication management that can be offered. Um, but in, in Chicago, in Chicago, not at this moment. We what we added actually is hikma services. So we do like holistic nutritional supplements. Oh, like some some water. Yeah. So what we have is uh, Hakim Mazin. Uh, I I don't know if he would like it if I call him Hakim, but he actually he, uh, probably doesn't like it if I mention this. But he has ijaza from Hakim Archuleta. Really? You know? Yeah. He was a khas student, a special student of Hakim Archuleta, and he's actually um, finishing off as MD. Naturopathic. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He also spent time in in, in Jordan, uh, connected to Mashaikh. Mashallah, he studied. I would the, love to the talk to him. He's a recent addition to Khalil Center, right? Yeah, he's recent. No, he's I because somebody actually, no, you know what? Like two weeks ago, I got a message from a brother recommending him. No, I would love to talk podcast. to his brother because I was, you know, um, there's a few places in the oh. area that are offering the naturopathy certification mm. and all that kind of stuff. So he, he's a person I would love to talk to. Yeah, it's so just you something guys that should bring him me. on maybe because he's, he's a very me. interesting person. He no, can give should. you the hikma uh, angle. He also does what he calls like psychosom- uh, like somatic like yeah. therapy. So he uses the body to get to the head. Wow, Whereas we might use the head to get to the body, you know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> wow. Introduce us to him at the uh, banquet next inshallah. week. Inshallah. Right? Yeah, he'll be there. Inshallah. So, so, what else is it that if somebody comes to you, you have to escalate table. them to something else? What do you? What is it that, like, you just you you know, as every uh, 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 right. center, you have to maybe refrain from. Yeah, certain and things. there's and that's part of the reason why people need to support Khalil Center because, yeah. um, really, we have not found anybody that's doing it. As an Islamic institution, there's also Muslim clinicians out there. You know, uh, may Allah give them barakah. Amen. You know, uh, they they reward them for all the service Amen. that they are doing because they they people, we have lots of issues and we need relief. Okay, but there's nobody that's doing this kind of niche work. That's uh, and uh, and so part of the things that we want to do is to expand levels of treatment that we provide. Right now, we do sort of like in-house counseling, so we can't do substance abuse because we, you have to have detox for that, for example. Okay. We can't do, um, you know, uh, very severe psychological distress because the individual might need, um, you know, environmental change. Of course. Even not so severe, like, disease, but actually the person has like an impulse control issue, like impulse, That's impulsive me. behaviors, but they they need a new environment. You have to change your environment. Yeah, like you know? like <laughs> I, I, impulse like, like impulse buying or like oh yeah drive going through the McDonald's drive through. Yeah, stuff like I that. mean it could, could be, but like you know uh, usually yeah, a person's a environment. Nice pair of boots, I can't. Okay, Sim, I'm just saying, man, I think you're too hard on yourself. You're actually a really great guy. <laughs> I know. It you, seems to be like every single. I when I go like, through the DSM, I think every everything is about me. It's <laughs> <laughs> talking about me. Narcissist, that's me. No, you're not. Anxiety disorder, <laughs> that's me. Everything. Maybe fellow the Mad Mamluk Nation, he's just uh, he's a he very had. good guy, and he thinks lowly of himself, like every Muslim should. Every should every Muslim think that way? He, like, yes, that's a good question. He no, he, he every sickness that he talked about, you're claiming you have. It's, it's not that bad. Trust me, I know you very well. You're all right. You'll be you're gonna be okay, inshallah. Oh, this is like the cl- the classic like tap on the back. You're gonna no. be just find my you're friend. Just, <laughs> that's right. I may be harming him. <laughs> There's actually, you know, Sheikh Rami actually yeah. told a story. I, if you get him on again, ask him this. Yeah. Right? He he told me. So how do you work with OCD behaviors? Right? Because yeah. he goes, I had this guy one time. He would just tell me. I have to repeat salah again. I have to do my wudu again. All this, and he's 
said, and I just got irritated. I said, just stop, okay? <laughs> just stop doing that. Why are you doing it, right? <laughs> you call me for everything. He said, the brother didn't call me for like six months. I felt terrible, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just stop. What a nice way. You were saying that you grew up, you were one of those kids, what? No, I was one of those kids who would literally go through the DSM and... Oh, really? I, I would try to, you know, find psychological problems for every person I met. I'm like, okay, this one is a uh, narcissist. Whoa. This one Whoa. is this, you know, social anxiety disorder, whatever, you know? And I would literally try to ascribe some kind of mental illness on every single person I met because I felt like everyone's a little bit nutty because they take life way too seriously. You know? <laughs> because they That's take a, life too seriously. That, <laughs> is, no, I, I, just don't, I, can't, I can't understand there's, like there's how, some, there, how people get called, so passionate about things, you know? So I never that because I was one of those kids who I was never passionate about one certain I see what you're saying uh, one specific field right and I'm like wait how are they so passionate that they want to become an expert in this I'm passionate about everything and <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know I, I like everything it's but like I, I'm not sensory overload <laughs> yeah yeah is, is that a sign of ADD <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. So oh, sorry. what ended up was I, I just went after the money and I there. just went into IT. So <laughs> <laughs> I thought everything was cool, but then I'm like, okay, well, if you think everything is cool, then just go into IT, make the money, and then just use your spare time to spend it on Mad so Demos. <laughs> like, no, he does a lot of research too, mashallah. Mashallah, mashallah. Yeah, I, I guess people, people that are passionate about lots of things, mashallah. Yeah. Yeah, some people are too passionate. I was like, I, I was in a WhatsApp group the other day and I like, uh, I'm I said something like, comes, right? the You're filter's like... coming off. I sense a filter coming off, guys. <laughs> I, uh, You've been trigger warning. There's a, so okay. do, I've established trust in this uh, do, environment. Do, do right? you follow uh, the NFL, Human? Do you know anything about the NFL? No, I'm a Canadian man. We don't do CFL, Argonauts, Toronto Argonauts. Yeah, that's just like trying to keep up with the Americans. Sure. You really don't take that stuff seriously. You know, uh, well, say, so Tony Romo's a quarterback for the Cowboys until recently this week. I guess he decided he's going to hang it up because nobody could sign him and he's going to be an announcer. And so um, a kid I know posted on Facebook like, well, uh, Romo, greatest of all time. And I was like, we're greatest of all time. I, I, and I commented, bruh, are you smoking crack? Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> and then, like, he was in a WhatsApp group, too, and I also tagged him there. He was like, yo, come on. You, you say ridiculous stuff, I'm going to call you out. And this kid started, I, th- I heard he actually was crying oh, no. on the side. He actually had to leave the group. And I was like, oh, snaps. Hope his mom doesn't call him for me. <laughs> That's what you're concerned about, his mom calling you? Oh. What, about, <laughs> hey, hey, what about his hurt feelings? In? I mean, like, you know, the, the, the ummah doesn't need, need people who can get easily triggered. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the filter's coming off. <laughs> this is why we'll never be accepted. Do you think, would, would he make a good therapist? <laughs> I was like, the doctor, someone comes and you're like, five oh, this will happen. Oh, you you were triggered. Like, man up, <laughs> take your skin. That's yeah, all, there's something you don't want to tell like somebody. Sounds like a lot of fathers. Or, doing, take you know? take a red pill. Here's a red pill. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, stop being a victim. You know, <laughs> my my dad used to say, you know, like don't cry. It's just men don't cry. You know. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> He's like, just uh, just get yourself up and, and and move on you know <laughs> well i, I was, I was gonna I like see my dad cry like once in my life maybe you <laughs> yeah, know yeah. well shake <laughs> shake amr had mentioned like as muslims we're supposed to like look kind of you know you know what i mean like look down on themselves like it reminds me of a story where so imam so was talking about shake ahmed yeah. rayyan right and he was like he's the don of the malikia in egypt but you met him right yeah yeah and he and i guess but if you ask if you like praise him he's like no i'm nothing yeah like he's super humble. Yeah. Like, what's the proper or the line, the fine line between self-loathing right, right, or yeah. hating and being modest? Right. I think that's that's your question. Yeah. لا يحل للمؤمن أن يذل نفسه. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not per- permitted for a believer to uh, kind of um, demean, De- defame and, himself. Defame himself. Yeah. Right? So that and that that's actually a really important like distinction, right? Like, okay, being able to and this is a, a, interesting, right? So I had this. So so one of the things I think about is that. So you have the shaksiya, the personality of the individual, and then you also have the nafs. What okay? about the aqliya? Well, just work with me on just these two things here, right? There's the aql of obviously, of course. There's a reason why he said that. Door, <laughs> it's an int- <laughs> Is that like Sim, just let him finish? <laughs> No, when somebody starts using a lot of Arabic, he feels very enticed to start using Arabic. Oh, words. I see, I see, I see. <laughs> Go ahead. Like, a little I'm, Arabic, I'm, I know. I try to I'm, use it. I'm just gonna jump his, right in. His and accent. Throw some... When somebody starts talking Arabic, he talks 
in English, but with the Arabic accent. <laughs> <to> feel, <laughs> but don't worry. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. Don't so, so, and this is important, right? So the thing is that you have to be able to distinguish between what is self here, a person's self, their yeah. personality, and then what is their nafs al amara bisu. So what happens is that when an individual is in nafs al amara bisu, this is like the nafs that's hedonistic. You have to work on the nafs, right? You work on it and you sort of like get into nafs al lawama. You're very self-critical, okay? Now self-critic is good. It's a process. It's a process of, it's a, 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 it's called it's your moral compass to ensure that you're keeping your you know, uh, your your head straight. You're making sure that you're you're keeping up with your progress. But what happens is that sometimes people overdo that, and when they do overdo it, what they do is they kill the shaksiya. So now what you have is a dying of an essence of an individual. So what they become is a very ritualized person. Mm-hmm. So they practice deen ritualistically. They operate their life ritualistically. They need a manual. They need somebody to tell them what to do on everything. So Sheikh, what should I do here? What should I do there? Is this, oh my God, I did something wrong. I did something wrong here. So now this is an overactive critic that is trying to kill the self, actually. But, uh, but then... So, so it's this fine balance of being able to say and distinguish. Actually, you can hear the difference in people talking, right? Be, between say, this is a normal, somebody who's sort of like uh, extroverted. Uh, for example, a sister's extroverted, or a brother for that matter. That, that's a personality thing, right? Yeah. But, but the thing is that, you know, if an individual starts indulging in like, uh, all sorts of nafsani things like they start like um you know seeking fame because they're extroverted and they are uh you know talking loudly in settings that they shouldn't they're focusing on themselves when they should that's not part of extroversion You're right. do you understand what i'm saying of course. that's the nafs and the waswasa that's fe- connected to this nafs. that personality that's, that's feeding this to try to get it to go over there right yeah. but the thing is that you uh so what people do And I see this a lot, right? They say, oh, I'm bad. I'm a bad person. Like, I have these evil traits. I see I need to be like this sahabi, this wali. I see my sheikh, my teacher is like this, like this, like this. And they feel really bad about themselves. The problem is that when you try to kill the nafs, it doesn't die. You can't kill the shaksiya. You're born with it. You have a rebound effect. It's not possible. So what you have is people end up giving up and then you see people like leaving dean or going into all sorts of crazy behaviors or whatnot because they try to tame something they couldn't exactly so yeah. you have to distinguish this is well, okay kill something. taming kill something. is what you're supposed right. to yeah right yeah. kill something that that you can't okay, that yeah. you need to live accept with, yeah. live with right you can only tame it yeah yeah and so then you need to look at you're extrovert that's great how can that be of service to you and what are the parameters that you have to set on yourself? Because I have an inclination maybe to be loud in certain settings. Okay, I got to rein that back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, th- I think what you're referring to is also the hadith of Rasulullah is that the believer never puts himself in a situation that he's a noble being. He doesn't dishonor himself in front of people to make a fool of himself, right? And uh, But as far as, you know, countless issues of the Sahaba, the Sahaba saying that, you know, for, I think Abdullah bin Mas'ud, where he was complimented and he said, if you knew what I did behind closed doors, you wouldn't be saying that about me, right? Now, he's not, he's not saying that I'm a bad person, consider me a bad person, I'm not a trustworthy person. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that compared to Rasulullah and me as a believer... I'm not where I should be. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think the mindset, I think that's where the fine line is. Mm-hmm. The, the, the line that we don't cross is getting into that downward spiral. We say, oh my God, I'm so bad. What's, what's it worth living? And then you go even lower. Why yeah. am I even living? Oh, you know what? I'm just going to seclude myself. And then that's right. where those was. And that's where sure. suicidal thoughts can yeah. come. Or, not, yeah. or sometimes people just say, oh, you know what? I was wrong all along. It was Islam that was a problem. Yeah, exactly. That's not, true. Yeah, exactly. not me. So I just need to get rid of Islam out of my yeah, life. Exactly. Kind of like, wow, that's yeah. So yeah. Kind of like, that's another so, conundrum yeah. if there ever right. was yeah. one. Is it, well, and Imam Al Ghazali talks about the i'tidal, right? Yeah. Bain al khawfi wal raja between yeah. fear and hope. Yes. Of and uh, so it's necessary between the to of wings right. Of fear and so hope. it's necessary to uh, be right in the middle. And we actually use this like model of i'tidal across all of the different elements 
to try to bring some integrative um, awareness to the individual to kind of balance. Yes, the balance. Yeah, so. Got to strike the balance, the yeah, middle path. Sheikh Amr, I think the, first, the example that, that's positive is like, it's more humility. Like what Sheikh Ahmed Tarayan says, it's more humility, right? It's, it's humility. You know, because right, even right. I've heard Bashayek say that, for example, even if you mean like a non-Muslim, you know, it's like Umar ibn Khattab and who was a non-Muslim at some point, and you don't know the fate of this. Of course, of but, you know it, it's it's funny because I, as I think about people who I've met over the years now, as I've you know been practicing the dean, there have been people who have entered the dean since I've been practicing and have become ulama. Allahu akbar. Subhanallah. You know what I mean? And that that's is and then you think when you think of that timeline, and, and I'm sure that's not the, you know, and we're still from the fairly young. We'll see more of that. Yeah. We're gonna see people who are kids today, like our kids' ages, or born into like families. Even who's they could be Islamophobes, their parents totally, mm. and then in 30, 40 years, they, they they could be like like some of the top students of knowledge in America or it's Canada. Right. In the West. Right. So right. I think You're that's right. the uh, yeah, everybody has like a potential to be something. So know, I think that's what they're really themselves. stressing yeah, is that like, don't be like too But I think that's a that's a che- it's a good check yeah, for absolutely. us, you know, especially in this age of. Narcissism, which is probably through the roof these days, exactly, I, yeah. I bet, Human, because yeah, exactly. of social media. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's all right. about everything's about self promotion. And, yep. and it's the check. You know, I, I like it. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, and it's putting in check. And that's why um, I think that one of the, and people sometimes are shy to talk about this, but I even talk, you know, to my students about this is that the origin of the human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the individual, which is sperm, right? And how it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times talks about it in a way that it manifests into this process of being a child, something that's just a, a murky liquid and it becomes mm. a human being. Mm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, It's mm. actually a liquid that exchanges, and obviously he's talking about with the mm. eggs. And all of a sudden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his kalam skips everything and says, All of a sudden, it's a hearing and seeing being, yeah, it's a so. liquid. And all of a sudden is hearing and seeing. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also refers to it as a despicable liquid. Yeah. Because if you want to know, if right. you start becoming arrogant, that's right. It puts that person in check. So it actually brings you closer to Allah. Yeah. But if you're arrogant, it's a remedy for arrogance, right? It's you, you actually what's your origin? You're actually from a despicable liquid, right? Subhanallah. Yeah. Sure. So as we wrap up Human, where can people learn more about Khalil Center? Obviously we have the banquet coming up. Yeah. Um and they can buy tickets online. Yeah, Khalilcenter.com. K H A L I L. Not E E. L I L Center. Uh, E-R for any Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, R-E. <laughs> right, exactly. E-R dot com. And, um, okay. And, uh, and uh, just to kind of uh, want to also give a shout out to um, Zakat Foundation, actually. So I, I want to mention this. Uh, alhamdulillah, uh, part of the growth and, 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 and uh, development of Khalil Center has been through our partnership with Zakat Foundation. Mashallah. Zakat Foundation and, uh, you know, early on 2014 is really when we had sort of our explosion um, is where, uh, you know, we met with Zakat Foundation leadership. Uh, Brother Khalil, actually his name is Khalil, is interest Ajib, Mashallah. right? Like uh, sort of, uh, and we didn't, I didn't know him before and just random. So I met him and he ended up... Um, he really like believed in Khalil Center, and uh, and they uh, and they endorsed us. They supported us. They gave us a lot of uh, direction and mentorship, in- institutional, structural funding, etc. And then recently, we just like formalized and said, "Hey, you know what? We've been sort of working in parallel and supporting one another, kind of like a historic. You know how historical Bimana sons used to work on patronage. You know, Ooh. like like you'd have a patron. So the Zakat Foundation has been sort of like that that patron." So so they basically, so we're, so now we're a Zakat Foundation project, alhamdulillah. And so we're bringing together, so we, inshallah, we're doing big things. There's lots of goals for expansion nationwide, lots of things we're planning on doing. And if you want to find out about it, come out and find out uh, about what this Zakat Foundation is going to be there. The ED is going to be there and founder. He'll talk about the relationship, what we're planning on rolling out, inshallah. So, uh, you know, big things are happening, inshallah. And, uh, and, and um, you know, I think we're in the age or era of moving from or recognizing that, yeah, we have a lot of masajid, madaris, Islamic schools, and we still need more, alhamdulillah. And, and people got to do that. But we also have to invest in human resources and social services and those things that uh, are kind of like, 
you know, the human element of, of within the communities as well. And the suffering people and the people, you know, our tradition is one where there was integration of all sorts of institutions and centers and spaces that were charitable, built on the awqaf, the, the, the ethic of, the, uh, of, of charity. So come out, learn a little bit about what we're doing. Zakat Foundation, mashallah, is really, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, helping us out in, in tremendous ways. And, and, uh, and we, I'm hoping that, you know, everybody comes out. Uh, special invites to all of you, exactly. please, you know, make sure that you're, you're there, inshallah. Inshallah. And, uh, you know, Zakal Khair, Barakallahu Fikum for this invite. It's, uh, Fikum Barakallahu. Now, are you guys have any other social media presence? Facebook? Twitter? Yeah, yeah, on Twitter. We're Khalil Center. Uh, on Twitter, we got a Khalil Center Facebook. Um, what else are the other social Instagram, media? Instagram, Snapchat. Um, so maybe we do. I don't know. About I, I those. could see so the Instagram. They have all their patients. <laughs> 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 or no, Snapchat. Yeah. Think you don't have Instagram or Snapchat. Don't worry. <laughs> right, right. Snapchat. I, I, actually, I actually don't have. Fa- I actually don't have Facebook or or Twitter either for myself. No, I just. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably better that way to be honest. Yeah, I is. just like work with some you know, some of the no, other bro- brothers and sisters at the. At that the work on the it's important to have a presence, but at the same time, it's like. It, it can become a downward spiral of just time wasting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More definitely. or less, amongst other things. So, uh, Human, Jazakallah Khair for coming Wait, on again. Yeah, yeah, man. That was Allah. awesome. This we got to awesome. get you guys another time. We, we, we can talk about a million things with yeah, you. Yeah. 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 Inshallah. Yeah. You know, I think you live pretty close by, so yeah. anytime. Right, right. Mi casa es su casa. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Too bad this is his casa. Sim's casa. No, Human, he gave me a look that where he wanted me in his office, so definitely we'll... we'll uh, yeah, you know what? You should. You need to model for everybody else yeah. that's afraid, you yeah. know, to say, hey, look, I'm afraid. I'm here, but I'm going to break out of my shell. I'm going to go, you know... I'm a put together guy, uh, you know, handsome, mashallah. mashallah you, you very look, handsome. You look, uh, you, you look very. very well put together. Very, you know, uh, very talented, functional, mashallah. You're putting, uh, you know, uh, some of the brains behind the mad man. He is the brains. He does all the editing and everything. Mashallah. Yeah. And uh, while doing IT and all these things, and you know, it's like you don't. Know, and 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 you could and you could use some consultation. Good. And you, you could Facebook Live that whole session between you. Two. Oh yeah, definitely. Put it yeah. on the Mad Mom Luke's page. Yeah, and, and, and as, as I'm an open book. You know, <laughs> if you challenge me, I'll do it. The, the last thing though is like people, even like married folks. We Sheikh Amr talked about it. A lot of married folks think that just because everything's gravy. They don't need counseling because we a lot of like a lot of my uh, some of my friends yeah. are coming through you right now for pre-marriage counseling, right? Yeah, I can't. And they don't have that. issues there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, they, they, they told me. <laughs> yeah, don't. Yeah, just don't. But, but like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not name dropping here. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 Brother Hubal <laughs> loses his license. <laughs> Darn it, man! Looks like they're gonna help me. <laughs> I just uh, no, but like this was a bad idea. <laughs> I, I, I just told I just told these guys like make sure that ex- there's extensive sex therapy in there as well. Well, and uh, <laughs> as far as but married folks, right? Yeah, I've heard that even married folks, cause it's just a tune-up, should come through for counseling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so I what I would say is that, like, uh, you know, the thing is, premarital, I think, is really useful, right? And I think that if individuals want to come in for consultation separately or together, then that's always beneficial, you know, because um, uh, the thing is that. Uh, in terms of marriages, we don't necessarily have. Uh, we're sort of like doing a lot. The 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 kind of roles that we're encompassing now are very different than the say the traditional. What our parents, uh, immigrant parents, those who sort of immigrated here, second generation or third generation, they have certain models in which they worked, right? And they and 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 they had certain expectations that they just inherited. Mm-hmm. Here we're in a different place, different space. You know, all our women are getting educated. Mashallah, that's great. They're getting educated, but that also means that they don't—they're not working off of the models that their parents are. Yeah. They have these new models, and that's a challenge to navigate to yes. figure out when people don't have particular models and two people who have different ideas or perceptions. My so preventative would be to negotiate those and to have those conversations. But a lot of people Beautiful. come in expecting that. The other person is going to know what I want, and that mm. person is going to know what I want. That's a dilemma. And they're yeah. sort of like butting heads, you know. 
So but we could do a thing on marriage one day. Yeah, you know? no, we'll, I'd we'll, love to. We'll, we'll do the other one. And Everything that has to do with marriage. Mahin will be very happy with that. Are you married? Mahin? I am married, yes. Okay, mashallah. Uh, eight years, inshallah, this June. Wow, mashallah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, not sure how that happened. Why did he come off as a bachelor to you? <laughs> are talk. you analyzing me? <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying to get out of my head. <laughs> well, I wish we had a picture for that one. <laughs> you triggered him on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, I'll try to wrap this up for the fifth time. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at the at gmail dot com. You can also follow us. On Twitter, like our Facebook page, subscribe on iTunes, Podcast Addict, and leave us a five star iTunes review. For our special guest, Kuman Kejavarzi. Did I get that right? Kishavarzi. Kishavarzi. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> Can you say it one more time? Kishavarzi. Mashallah. Wow. <laughs> and my co host, Sheikh Amir Saeed and Sib. This is Mahin signing off for the Mad Mamluks. Assalamu alaikum.